Hi, everyone. I'm back, but seated this time. So, Emily, thank you, first of all, for being with us. You have just been such a leader in this space since the beginning. I mean, Twist, you know, of course, started as a startup. We're going to get to that in a second. But is now an industry leader, a global company. You know, but you've been here since the beginning. This conference and Twist have sort of grown up together. And so I want to kick off our conversation by taking us back to the beginning of the early days of Twist, the early days of really the synthetic biology industry. What was that like for you founding Twist? Yeah, thank you for, for having me. Well, actually, I was at the first in BioBeta uh, company uh, uh, meeting. And you know, way back then, uh, in 2012, uh, synthetic biology was not cool, right? <laughs> it was right after uh, uh, SynBio 1.0, where companies were trying to make biofuel. Mm. And uh, the, t the science worked, but the business model was, was not quite there. And so it wasn't cool. Then what we were doing was DNA synthesis. Frankly, nobody cared that much about DNA synthesis, and those that understood it, they dismissed it as, oh, you know, it's community DNA. So how do you build a billion dollar company, or multi-billion dollar company on, um, on uh, synthetic DNA? And then we, had, we just had 20 pages of PowerPoint, which is an idea, and three good names. Like we had literally nothing except an idea. And, and, and three good names. And so went out and, and fundraised, and um, we got a lot of no's. And what I've learned is that when someone tells you no, it, it's actually not yet. Mm. And some of uh, our best investors, it started as a no, and as we built and, and started to demonstrate over time, a lot of the not yet uh, turned into, into a yes. And uh, so the key is uh, definitely not to be discouraged. And, uh, and if you hear a no, uh, uh, um, um, here, 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 not yet. And then now, tomorrow is a nine-year anniversary, twist wow. anniversary. And so now we are shipping billions of bases every, every year to thousands of customers, and it's just the beginning. And, and our goal, again, is to, to serve our customers. Really, our customers are the heroes. They're the ones that are changing the world, and we are enabling them with DNA to enable them to do their great work. I mean, this is incredible. I mean, Twist has played a, a huge role in, in vaccine development. I mean, even the last couple of years, you've been instrumental. All of your team has been instrumental in helping us actually get through this pandemic. But you're just saying to us that when you started this, it wasn't cool, and now it is one of the coolest things in our industry. How did you know? Did, was there a moment you're like, no, how did you believe in yourself that much and your team that much? Was there, what did you see there that no one else saw? Well, I think for, for me, um, uh, I, I came from the sequencing side, mm -hmm. the DNA uh, reading side. Uh, I've launched a bunch of products in, in that area. And so I had seen what happens when you put Sanger sequencing onto a silicon chip. Right, so it, it's the same chemistry in a, in a 96 well plate tube, and you put it on a silicon chip, the cost of sequencing goes down. And, uh, and so we've, we've seen what, that, what happened with the sequencing world. And so the, the idea of microfunders, uh, the, the bills, was, well, what if we did that on the reading side, mm -hmm. right? And so you take the known chemistry of writing DNA, it's, it's in the tube, and you, you shrink that onto a silicon uh, piece, and you'll get more throughput, more uh, l lower cost, and, and we thought, well, that, that could really enable a, a brand new field. And so that was their idea. They, they were looking for a CEO to do that, and uh, I'm the victim. Uh, <laughs> and it's a good thing that uh, you know, I, I, I knew DNA chemistry in science and out from my, from my PhD, but you know, that, that's how uh, it, it, it happened. And what's great is that we really you know, got in at, to, at the very beginning of, of of um, the great Symbio uh, explosion. And even now, we are still in the early innings, and, and it's kind of like what happened with the semiconductor industry. You know, equivalently, we are probably in the, in the early 60s of, of the semiconductor industry. So there's another 40, 50 years of, of amazing things, and together, we are building the ecosystem, and that's really going to change the world. Yeah, I think it's incredible. I think to even hear that of what we've already built, and we're still in the 60s, 40 years from now, I'm very, very excited, because you, you said something that I thought was important, which is that you are fundamentally a researcher in your origin, 
and now you're this sort of epic businesswoman. How did you learn how to be a businesswoman? Yeah, well, I mean, uh, um, so it's true that my, uh, my uh, um, academic careers were around the DNA chemistry, but uh, actually my parents are entrepreneurs, and so they gave me a, a great gift, which is, you know, growing up, I was always, the only thing I heard them talk about was this business, that business, you know, this customer, that, that, that thing, and so that, that's, you know, I was kind of, uh, uh, based into it, and then uh, I'm gonna age myself, but uh, when I was about 12 years old, the, the VCRs came out. Mm. And one of the, the business that my dad has was kind of like a, a Best Buy. And so they were selling everything, and they, there was VCRs, and they were not moving, like they couldn't sell it. And so he told me on well, Saturday, you go and you sell the VCRs. And, and so 12 <laughs> years old, and, uh, and I realized uh, how to sell, and I realized that I love selling. And so, basically, you know, people they either want <coughs> something cheap, something easy to program, someone, something that, that, that doesn't break, or something that's cool. And if you ask them, they tell you. And so, once they told you, oh, I want something cool, this one is cool. Oh, it's the most expensive. Or, or, you know, and, and then I started selling a ton of this, you know, and, and, um, and then you know, I would ask for commission from my dad, and it's like, everything you want, I, I'll, I'll, I'll give you. Uh, and, uh, and I'm uh, like, well, I want to buy cigarettes, drugs, and alcohol, but <laughs> <laughs> so that didn't work out. But um, but at least I learned how to how to how to to sell. And when you start a company, uh, frankly, that's what you need to do. You need to sell the vision. Uh, and uh, and uh, if you are a CEO, you have to love selling. And and uh, and if you can do that, it's it's extremely rewarding. I never had the guts to ask my dad for commission when I was 12. This is, this is a life lesson here. Did you have a, um, was there something then that you wish you knew, that you know now that you go, oh God, I really wish I knew X, Y, Z? Well, I definitely learned a lot over the, the last nine years. I think the, um, I think we stumbled into it, mm -hmm. and so we, we didn't know it was important, but in retrospect, it was probably some of the most important thing. One is, uh, is, is if you're the CEO, you have to be focusing on, on fundraising all the time. You close your round, the next day you start fundraising, uh, because again, it, it takes months of conversation and relationship building, and so it's not, oh, I've raised my Series A, now I'm gonna wait six months, or you have to be fundraising all the time, so that's from a CEO point of view. And then from a company point of view, uh, you absolutely have to focus on culture on day one. Because ultimately, once you grow, once, once you're successful, culture is what propels you. Uh, because you know, now we're a thousand people at Twist, and, and I don't know what's going on in most of the part of the company, but because the culture is right, you know, people are like, oh, what will you know, uh, Emily want to do? And, and they do it. And, and uh, so culture is super important, but you, you have to work at it, you have to create it, because if you don't create it on your own, there will be a culture. It's just not gonna be a culture that, 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 that you like. And so me and my co-founder were super deliberate of building a culture of, of grit and impact and service and trust. And, and it's a hard one, like grit. Uh, even now, some people say, you know, I have a hard time hiring that position. Can you take grit off of the website because it scares people? <laughs> I'm like, great that it scares people. You know, they should, those that don't have grit, they should work for my competitors. They're gonna do great there. <laughs> uh, and so we keep it on purpose. But that, that, so that, that's definitely a great lesson. And then uh, the other thing is that if you're a CEO, you know, one thing I didn't know is that it's the loneliest job in the, in the world because you know, things don't go well most of the time. And, and uh, you can't tell your team because you have to be, oh, you can't tell your investors. Uh, and so it's, you really have the weight of the world on you and you're sitting, in, in, you know, laying in bed at four in the morning saying, what did I do? How am I get myself out of this? But uh, ultimately, you know, it goes away and, and, um, and it passes. And then one thing that I am glad I didn't know is I'm glad I, I didn't know how hard it was. Mm. Because if you knew how hard it was, you would not start it. And since you don't know, by the time you find out, it's too late, you're already <laughs> into it. And so now you might as well just keep going. I love that. There's like a little bit of ignorance is bliss there. Like you want to know some things, but that one thing you're, I don't want to no, know no, that. No. Well, so brilliant. So we're in a room full of, you know, people who are just starting out on their journey that they, sorry, you've just learned that it's really hard, you know, erase that from your brain. But 
you know, what excites you most about the next generation of synthetic biology? What excites you about the most, the next generation of entrepreneurs? Yeah, and I'm super excited about them for a few reasons. So some of them uh, are going to be our future customers. So I'm, I'm glad that we are creating a lot of, uh, helping create a lot of um, baby twist customers that are going to grow into, into giant users. Uh, I'm glad that uh, uh, some of people here are competitors, right? Competitors, competition is awesome. It creates better product, bigger markets. And then overall, what that I'm really excited about is that you know, as an industry and all those entrepreneurs are really creating things that are going to truly change the world, right? Mm -hmm. It's not like uh, uh, you, know, you work at, at a software company and, and you're working on, on auto search or autofill, you know, from in the search bar. Who cares? Like that, that is not exciting, <laughs> no, not rewarding. You know, you know, all the entrepreneurs here, they're working on, on literally world-changing things that can make the world a, a, a better place. And, and, and that, that is super, super exciting. I love, I love hearing you say things like this. It's like, yeah, wait, we're, we're working on the coolest technology in the world, and it's a bit of an open secret that's becoming less and less secret by the day. You know, is there, you know, for people who are just starting out on their journey, who are just diving into the synthetic biology world, go, okay, where is the hottest thing? Where are the opportunities? Where are we rocking? Where do you see the biggest or what are you most excited about in this industry? What's our potential? I mean, I, I put things in a few categories. You know, there's health and sustainability. On the health side, I think someone in the room here is going to make cancer a chronic disease, right? Where, for sure. Like, so someone is going to uh, de truly develop personalized medicine to, to, um, to um, you know, cancer and other diseases that are really going to improve the human condition. Um, there is, I'm super excited about anything that's sustainable. You know, can we move from um, materials made from oil, like plastic, which, you know, last 100 years was the century of plastics, and, and move into a century of protein. Like, all the materials that, that we use should be made of protein. It's going to be better uh, and more sustainable. Super excited about all the direct-to-consumer stuff, right? You have Zbiotics over there. Uh, you have, you know, lots of lots of, of, of great yeah. things. Uh, anything around around direct-to-consumer, I think people are going to be using synthetic biology every day. They have no idea that it's uh, synthetic biology. I'm super excited about uh, data storage. Yes. I think uh, there is a, a, a massive need. And then the last thing I'll say probably is is what I'm very excited about is. As an industry, we're going to create millions of jobs. Mm. We're going to create millions of bioeconomy jobs. And those are not going to be menial. They're going to be well-paid jobs. Uh, those are not going to be uh, uh, in, in other countries. They're going to be local, because you're, you're going to use biomanufacturing to locally produce things. And so we're literally going to make the planet a better place. We're going to get people uh, more healthy. Uh, we're going to make things more fun uh, with the direct consumer, and we're going to create jobs. Like, what's I mean, what's not to like? What's not to like? We could do this all day, Emily. Your wisdom, your experience. Thank you so much for sharing this with us today, ladies and gentlemen. Emily Lefroust. Thank you so much. Thank you.